praise the Lord, as I watched the camera, I was recording, and suddenly, after a little bit of time, the camera decided to do a, it's a uh, orbit sphere, so what it does, when it resets itself, or when you turn it off and turn it on, it'll kind of do a self-check, and the way that it does that is that the sphere on top of a little stick, so to speak, will kind of spin and turn and then focus back in on you. Well, I was in the middle of recording, so when it did its little self-check thing, I went, I think the recording stopped, <laughs> and sure enough, it did. So praise the Lord. This is part two of that healing when God heals or doesn't, and how he chooses to do so. And we were talking about how when the waters you know, moved, that the faith of Chondriac, you know, would go ahead and you know, jump into the pool of Siloam or whichever pool it was at Jerusalem at the time in order to be healed. And while that worked for them, you know, and it was their tradition to do so, it was more of a hypochondria, kind of a, a manifestation of putting something, uh, object of faith, you know, a focus for their faith, but then also kind of like a a way that the body heals itself because you see God intended the body to heal itself when he created it he gave it certain capabilities to heal or not be healed the white blood cells that are inside of you the stem cells that are inside of you all of them are designed for a purpose and some of them are designed to coordinate or to complement the healing process that God already created in you to combat most of the problems we run into now, sadly, the world is cursed, you know, and it's not really under God's control yet. But, you know, Satan is the god of this world, and so he's gradually, you know, he's caused a lot of things to happen, and then man, of course, thinking he's in control, has caused a lot of other things to happen, you know, like carcinogens and pesticides and things that really aren't beneficial to our health that causes a deterioration of our body. So, sometimes we even do it to ourselves, like, Kind of like when you don't, you know, get enough rest or you don't sleep enough. Well, all these things can cause disease, but to cause healing, a lot of us don't really know how. Well, nowadays they have the new popular Dr. Oz, you know, <laughs> and it's almost like the magic cure. Only all he's doing is the same thing that we can do. He has gone and seen what works and does it and then tells people about it. It's not as though he knew it all along. He just gets people together with information and presents that. And that's what God did when he sent his son. Jesus said, look, this is what's going to happen when you do this. This is what's going to happen when you do this. If you do this, this will happen. We call it reaping and sowing. You get what you sow and you reap what you planted. And sometimes it's good, you know, like taking care of yourself and resting and taking vitamins, you know, and letting the body be strong. Sometimes it's bad, you know, when you kind of like, you know, yeah, you decided to go do that kind of stuff, you know, and you wound up with, wow, communicable diseases. Ooh, yuck. And so we all need to recognize and hear from God in order to receive from him either counsel to protect us from what may be causing an illness or healing from him if he chooses to heal, or he may even tell us to go to a doctor. Imagine that. God telling you to go to a doctor. Well, it's kind of like that old joke they keep saying, you know, if you're drowning, you know, and a drowning man decides to pass up on the life preserver and the rowboat, you know, and, and the lifeguard that came out to save him because he was looking for God to do it. Well, when he died and went to heaven, they tell the story that God said, well, I sent you all those rescuers. Why didn't you use them? <laughs> that was me. Well, you know, I mean, that's kind of a cute story, but the fact is, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. So you have to have the complete picture in order to understand the individual circumstances. And that's what happens in your life. You have to look to God for healing and then let Him lead you in the way He wants to go. Not just go to some faith it, believe it, you know, accept it, and, you know, run around, you know, with a smiley on your face. Because anybody can paint a smiley, and anybody can feel happy when they're happy. But you know, take some of those people and put them in circumstances like dying. They don't look so happy. They're not joy joy anymore. They're like, oh boy. <laughs> no more joy joy. It's a oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And 
the born again christian learns to recognize in all circumstances we operate by grace and mercy it's god's mercy that he chooses to heal it's god's grace when he decides to do something miraculous in our lives otherwise then we need to be about the business of taking care of ourselves preparing ourselves and doing what god told us to do in the first place and sometimes that means get enough sleep get enough to eat you know, rest, take care of your body, take care of your soul, take care of your spirit. Because you're a tripart being. You have to keep everything in balance. And the way we do that is by studying the scriptures to learn that it's not always about seeking some so heavenly minded, miraculous thing that's going to always be a buzz for us, you know, ooh, goosey bumps. Or that it's always going to be something that's, you know, so practical that we just automatically do it because, you know, pop two pills, etc., you know, and we're going to get rid of that headache. Maybe the headache was there because God sent it. You know, you're doing too much. So you have to kind of have a relationship. And that's what healing is about, too. Healing our spirit by having that personal relationship with God that He can direct us in the way we should go. Because if you're just running around trying to find healing, you're not being healed at all. You're trying to find a cure. That's all you're doing. You just want to immediate solution to your problem, not a permanent fix to the issues that caused it in the first place. Abide in me and I in you. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I know that in me that is, in my flesh, there dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard. Little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and be not ashamed before him at his coming. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. You know, this whole thing about abiding, you know, people hear like big words and they go, huh? <laughs> you know, the huh word, H U H, with a question mark? Huh? Abide? Huh? Well, that means having a personal relationship. It's not like somebody came up with this new, you know, in the last 10 years thing about having a personal relationship, you know, and religion versus relationship. Because I know that's a popular buzz thing nowadays. But if you look throughout church history, always the saints have talked about talking to God, having a relationship with him. They didn't use those words. They used like his providence and his faithfulness and his confidence and his relation, you know, his speaking, as well as abiding in him. And the abiding meant to have that personal interaction and interrelationship that we talk about nowadays as having a relationship. Because in these latter days, with so many people having not a good relationship or not knowing what a relationship is, they could have a long-distance relationship and not even realize God wants to be personal and intimate, not long-distance calling, you know, and we don't have two-way communication. We have a one-way street. It doesn't work that way. You don't send a letter to God, you know, and then hope for a response. You talk to God and God talks to you. And that's how healing is accomplished. When you ask or petition, whether you pray or whether you lay it all before him or whether you trust him in the first place, God responds. He hears all our prayers. He ministers to all our needs. He is always at work in us. So responding to him, we wind up learning that we can ask him for all things. We can ask him to show us what he's doing in our life. We could ask him to show us what he wants us to do about being sick. He could show us what he wants us to do about a bad relationship you just got out of or you just moved into. Because all of these things are going to affect our spiritual health. They'll affect our emotional health. They will affect, and we know that the spirit and the emotions will affect it greatly, 
our physical health. So in order to be really complete in Him, in order to abide in Him, then we have to walk like Jesus walked. We have to do like Jesus did. And what He did was He got up, kind of like you did today. He took a look around, and He saw how messed up everything was. And He said, looked up to heaven, and He said, God, thank you. And then He began talking to God about His day. And we're told that Jesus did it long before the sun rose and that he only did those things that he saw his father doing. So he had to have not only talked to God, which is amazing to me in the first place, he had to have seen God likewise. You know, like the heavens opened up somehow and God showed him his day. That's amazing to me. Wouldn't it be something special if today, while you're worried about healings or health or issues of death or life, whether your loved ones or whether you personally are someone involved in you know, trying to figure this healing question out, maybe today talking to our Maker might be the way to find out what it is that He wants to do in you to accomplish His will. Because whether we live or whether we die, whether we accomplish or be made perfect, through death, then God is at work still to do what He wants to do and accomplish through you. And He will use you as you are, whether you're sick, whether you're healthy, whether you're tall, whether you're short, whether you're long, whether you're, you know, the whole story. And He wants you to be at peace with what He's doing. Meaning, when I too was in the hospital, I know how miserable at times I was. But you know, there were at times also in my sufferings that I was full of joy. So, count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into divers trials and tribulations, knowing that the working of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that God may accomplish all that he wants to do in you through that trial you may be going through in health or in wealth, or in relationship, or in job, or in situation that you find yourself in today. Because God wants to heal you. That's obvious. Now how he accomplishes it, that you need to ask him.